What's up, class of Kinnick? Twenty twenty two. Get this party started, shall we? Three months ago, I crossed the Kinnick office as I was going to the gym, and I recalled having a thought of possibly giving a graduation speech. But why? I have no credibility whatsoever. The audacity I have to think I could give a speech to a group of graduates I'm only a few years older than the audacity I have. So I walked into the campus and was able to end up in this position. My name is Kay, I'm 22 years old, and I attended Kinnick High as a freshman in 2015, back when Mr. Lewis and I had a bit more hair in the front. I didn't have anything I needed to say in this speech, I just thought it'd be a good video. My occupation is a YouTuber. I've been one since 2012. I began YouTube by chance. I was about seven years old looking at the screen of a YouTube video, and it looked like something fun. It was just an idea that I never quite pulled the trigger on. Then at 12, I lived in California, and I made my first ever video. It was for my swim coach because she was leaving. Then I made a video for a school project, which was my first YouTube post. Then I made a video with a friend, and then more videos with other friends. So by the time I left to Japan, the habit of making videos was instilled in me enough to keep making videos by myself in Japanese middle school and then here at Kinnick. After Kinnick, I moved to Colorado and pulled a giant scheme where I faked a Japanese accent for my whole sophomore year. Basically, I took like this for the whole year. On the last day of school, I told everyone, filmed it, and the video blew up, growing my channel from 4,000 to 150,000 subscribers in a week. So many new opportunities. A lot of YouTubers I grew up watching knew about me now. It was insane. I proceeded to grow and reap the benefits of this sea of internet fame. I barely passed the necessary classes to graduate high school, but after I did, I moved back to Japan, Tokyo this time, and recorded myself enjoying life, living the dream. You're probably noticing something. Aren't I supposed to motivate you guys or something? There's a lot of me, me, me going on here. Well, yes. All the validation I received from the internet swelled up my ego to that of Alexander the Great and Kanye West. I did whatever I wanted with this sense of self-importance, which came with a lot of unchecked self-destruction maybe because I was away from authority. I was unstoppable. But unstoppable going where? I don't know. I ran myself into a bottomless pit. At first I was blaming everything for where and how I ended up being, faulting the authorities, most of it gravitating towards my parents. But I slowly became in tune with my own authority and my blame dissipated. Despite the torment, the dread, the hopelessness, the unsupervised freedom led me to an existential crisis way before all my peers. You see, it is my parents' fault. Everything, no doubt about it. It's their fault they let me run into this deep, searing hellish pain but let's change the perspective instead of them letting me end up this way what did they give me that made me end up this way what is it that they let me keep that led me to become how I am audacity Life is a double-edged sword, my friends. What saved me is exactly what killed me. And what killed me is exactly what will save me once again. 
I don't have a message to give because I don't fear you ending up becoming a certain way that we need to avoid. If you end up like me, you'll get there. If you end up otherwise, you won't have to bear the pain that gets you there. It all balances out. Our experiences are personal, so our truths are personal. I don't see facts as something tangible that we need to confirm before we share it. That caution is what caused all my anxiety, the need to be right. But there is no objective right. Might is right. I don't see facts as tokens we receive and give out. I see fact giving as a muscle that can be cultivated. This way of mind brings challenge and opposition, but the truth I live in continues to grow stronger, quicker, smarter, nimbler, welcoming, compassionate, and wholesome. The resistance I receive is exciting, and as long as I stay faced towards truth, I come to forgiveness, acceptance, and love every single time. I become truer. I find out things were not as they seem, which I never would have realized if I didn't say the false truth in the first place. Oftentimes, the resistance to my fact giving is too much or too little to my taste, but it never seems to kill me. What did kill me was standing behind facts that I thought were real. It was the lifeless, static, conceptual nature of a fact that killed me, not the unconfined, changing, flexible gesture of giving facts. A fact is safe. A fact is forever. A fact is immortal. Fact giving is lucid, lively, and very much mortal. You can keep your facts to stay immortal if you'd like, but I think each and every one of our intuitions believe deep down that that isn't nature's call. I speak not to the ones who will stop halfway, not to the ones who will become cemented as a fact when they've had enough, not to the ones who don't care. I speak to the people like me, the ones who absolutely know they are geniuses, but have not acted on it because of the straitjacket we wear called society. I can't wait to see the upcoming greatness that I've sparked today, as well as the resistance I received from speaking my thoughts. I could use a good workout. I'll leave you with the main quote my mother always told me, never give up. And the main quote my dad always said, work hard, play hard. Have a great night. You kinnit graduates, you.